So I go on to Amazon the other day and search cheap action camera and I find Amazon's best seller to be this Acaso EK7000 with over 11,000 reviews, most being five stars. And it's only 50 bucks. So of course I buy now and today we're gonna pit this baby against my GoPro Hero 8 Black. Is this $50 action camera any good? Hey guys, I'm Ben from Authentech and to be honest, after seeing the side-by-sides, I was very surprised with today's video's results and not necessarily in a good way, let me show you. is actually a pretty large brand in terms of budget action cameras, but GoPro is that name brand that everyone's heard about. This EK7000 is 50 bucks on Prime, the GoPro 8 originally $400, now price dropped down to 300. I purchased them both, no sponsorship today. And let me be clear, I am rooting for the underdog. I usually prefer and like to recommend the budget-friendly options if and when possible. First, let's start with side-by-sides, then we'll get into some of the specs and how the other features compare. Jumping into video first, the highest resolution the Acaso can shoot is 4K at 25 FPS. So unfortunately, it can't shoot 30 frames per second, which is a pretty major negative, but its 4K quality looks pretty dang horrible. Definitely looks like it was shot on a potato. It's pixelated and muddy, and I even saw someone saying it was a 4 megapixel sensor inside, so that 4K is quote fake and probably just upscaled, which I can sort of believe. If you're viewing this video on a tiny screen, well, you might not be able to see all the clear differences, but if we zoom in or you're viewing on a larger monitor, you'll definitely see what I'm talking about. The next thing to notice, which is another repeating theme throughout these tests, the Acaso does not have electronic image stabilization, so it's producing very shaky footage and just walking shots and getting pretty gnarly in my jogging tests. Now the GoPro, of course, is known for great stabilization, and here at 4K30, hyper smooth turned on, it's keeping the horizon pretty dang smooth and steady. Now funny enough, when I showed you guys a little preview shot on my Instagram, some preferred the brighter exposure and more natural colors on the Acasa over the GoPro, and I can see where you're coming from. The Hero 8 seems to consistently crush the shadows, it's very saturated and punchy contrast, and even though it can be a tad aggressive at times, normally it looks pretty vibrant straight out of camera. Now on that topic of exposure, point number three, the Acaso has pretty bad dynamic range. We're either losing details in the dark shadows or blowing out highlights. And I think it's important to note, I think this EK7000 is at least four years old, which is pretty ancient in technology years. Crazy that it's still listed as Amazon's number one bestseller in action cameras. Funny though, in my last GoPro Hero 1 versus 8 video, I bet the 10 year old GoPro 1 might actually beat this Acaso in better video footage. What do you guys think? Switching over to 1080p, 60 FPS on both, this is where I saw a lot of people saying the Acaso shines. And I can sort of agree with this, as its 1080p footage scaled up might actually look better than its 4K video. Again, we have some of that bad shakiness with no stabilization, it's pixelated and blocky, poor contrast and dynamic range. Now one thing that's nice is it has a 170 degree wide angle field of view, plus the benefit of recording at 60 frames per second here, we can half speed the footage on a 30p timeline, it's a nice option to have. This is a quick audio test, audio test on the Acaso EK7000. And this is audio on the GoPro Hero 8 Black. How does the audio sound and compare? How does the audio sound and compare? Audio test one, two, three, four. Audio test one, two, three, four. And the GoPro clearly wins the audio test as well. Now the Acaso sounded pretty muffled and I made sure to mount it in this open housing for best audio recording possibilities. The GoPro was a little out of sync, so minus points there. 1080p, 30 frames per second, pretty similar results. And I'll say it again, if you play back this Acaso 1080p footage on a tiny phone screen, well, it might not look terrible, but it's far from great in my opinion. And you gotta remember, this is an action camera after after all, and going for a quick scooter ride on my cycle board, while the Acaso has that nice wide angle lens, I can't get over how rough that footage looks. It just looks super dated, like it was captured on a VHS camera or something, and I'm trying hard to like it. The Acaso can also record at 2.7K 30fps, which again I had high hopes for, but it's more the same old story. Pixelated, mushy, shaky, bad compression and artifacting. 
If I freeze frame here, it's almost funny we can zoom in and count the large blocks of pixels. It looks like it was shot on a really old flip phone or something. Shooting a quick slow-mo test and the Acasso can shoot up to 720p, 120fps, which isn't bad. And here's the GoPro 1080p, 240fps. Naturally though, the Acasso looks pretty pixelated and it has that tighter field of view, the GoPro coming out ahead. And in all these tests, in no way was I expecting this Acasso to perform as good or even half as good as the GoPro. But it is one sixth of the price and are you getting one sixth of the value? I'm not sure. I had to try a quick low light test and the Acasso is looking pretty soft and grainy. Of course, GoPro is usually pretty bad as well in low light conditions, but it's looking a little bit better with brighter exposure, easier to see some of the details and highlight control of those changing LED lights and colors is looking pretty good. The Acasso supports time-lapse photo mode, but it's not time-lapse video mode. Make sure you understand the differences. It's snapping interval photos, JPEGs, And then you have to combine all those photos together into a video file in post editing like I did here in QuickTime. The process is pretty old school and slow. The Acaso time lapse looks okay, but still kind of soft and blurry. The GoPro is in hyperlapse mode, and while its contrast is a little too punchy with crushed shadows for my taste, of course it's looking way better in 4K. Plus we have stabilization here on the GoPro, so you can't be expecting to shoot any hyperlapses on the Acaso. Switching over to photos, the Acaso says it can snap 12 megapixel images. That's 4608 by 2592 pixels. And here's how those compare to the GoPro's 12 megapixel shots. And it's quite the difference again. Just because it says 12 megapixel on the Acaso box, all pixels are not created the same. Crazy difference in clarity and details, colors and dynamic range. Even the GoPro's ultra wide field of view is looking much wider than the Acaso. When we zoom in and pixel peep, we can clearly see the major quality differences. It's pretty night and day between these two cameras. Just for fun, I want to compare this Acaso photo to my 10 year old GoPro HD Hero 1 photo that I snapped a couple days ago and just look at the difference in quality. I just had to show this flower shot though. It's like this one time Acaso beat out the GoPro, at least in terms of the highlight control. The GoPro here is blowing out some of those whites, whereas then we can see some of the flower petal detail on the Acaso. And low light photos, well, here you go. I'll let you guys see the obvious differences between these. Okay, so these results really shocked me because truly going into this video, I thought the Acaso was gonna perform way better than it did because not for that $50 price tag, but for the 11,000 plus Amazon reviews. I thought this action camera was gonna be at least acceptable in some areas, and I was really hoping it could be this fun, cheap budget action camera that I could recommend to you guys, but it underperformed in so many different ways. And this video is not made to bash this $50 action camera. I honestly was hoping that it would perform much better than it did, and I don't think I can recommend it. Now, I did see this one person say that they bought this camera to mount under their Jeep for some off-roading shots because they didn't want to put their expensive GoPro on under there, so in case if it got destroyed, then it wasn't a big deal, and I can almost see that as a viable buying option. It's like a disposable camera. So maybe if you know you're gonna put in some precarious shot and it might get destroyed, well, it's only $50 and it's a lot cheaper than destroying an expensive GoPro. Now, let me show you guys one thing I did really appreciate, and that's all the accessories and mounting options and bonus goodies that were included in the box. All of this included at that $50 price tag is pretty impressive. Plenty of mounts and adapters, waterproof housing, tethers, two rechargeable batteries, and a dual charging dock. Even the $300 GoPro doesn't include barely any of this in its package. I also kind of like this wireless remote, one button to snap a photo and the other to start and stop recording. The Acaso has a two inch display on back. It's non touchscreen, which is a major bummer. Navigating the menus and changing the system settings were kind of annoying. I was able to find this updated model out there called the EK7000 Pro, which has a touchscreen plus electronic image stabilization for about 10 bucks more. Let me know if you guys want me to check out that one after this. This Acaso has a built-in HDMI port 
port and Wi-Fi to wirelessly connect to your phone. Their iSmart DV iPhone app is pretty janky, but I actually got it to work and was able to live preview my shot, snap photos or videos, and change resolution and settings. I could even download and save locally to my phone my gallery images and video. Now it sure wasn't fancy, but it sort of got the job done. I tried seeing if I could connect the camera to my computer for a cheap wide angle webcam and I couldn't get to work through the USB connection. Now some people suggested maybe it could be a possible cheap dash cam and it might be viable, but then I saw you have to manually start and stop recording each time and these other hassles that probably didn't make it worth it. The camera froze on me on day one of shooting, so it's not without bugs and issues. A nice example that GoPro isn't the only one that freezes. I tried to start recording a clip on the Acaso and it's frozen. It won't even start recording. So I'd really hoped that this was going to be a good budget camera option, but it was lackluster in almost every category. And I want to make it clear I am not advocating that there's no good budget cams out there and that you need to go spend hundreds of dollars on the latest GoPro because that's not true. Do you remember the old, uh, do you remember the old Yi cameras? I reviewed all these. They were super budget friendly and they performed awesome. Or you guys remember this thing that I reviewed, the Insta360 Go. It weighs only 20 grams. It's super tiny and magnetic and records way better quality and really impressive stabilization, and it's only a couple hundred bucks. So make sure you guys stick around as I'm determined to find the very best budget cameras for you guys. Now I'm also hung up on the idea that even if you had a very old phone, like the old Galaxy S7, it was released four plus years ago and its photos and videos looked way better than this camera. Or the LG V30, it was one of the first wide angle lenses in a phone and it's like 150 bucks on Amazon right now. So I have this feeling for just a little bit more money, there's a tipping point where there's gonna be a lot more bang for your buck. This guy just isn't it. I tried really hard to look for the positives on this $50 action camera, but I just couldn't get there and I think the comparisons the side-by-side -side speak for themselves its quality of photos and videos are just really lackluster also coming up I'm gonna show you guys what a one inch sensor action camera looks like and its 5.3 K footage is on the opposite side of the spectrum it's crazy sharp and good-looking any other budget action cams you want me to check out leave a comment down below thank you guys so much for stopping by and until I see you next week let's live all then tech <laughs>